welcome back everyone make sure you stay tuned to the end of the show for a special contest that we're running we we're giving away a free hack naked t-shirt i am drinking an old-fashioned except i tried to make the old-fashioned without an orange without any maraschino cherries and without sugar which are three very important ingredients to an old-fashioned as it turns out so I don't think I made an old fashioned. I think I just made bourbon with whatever the hell else I could find out at the bar. And it was drinkable, but it's alcohol, so we drank it. But we it wouldn't make a second attempt. Sounds like bourbon and bitters to me. It was bourbon, bitters, grenadine, orange bitters, Angostura bitters, grenadine. I think that was it. Yeah. Yeah, it didn't. It didn't. I wasn't very hopeful for it, Jack. <laughs> So now, over to Joff. I'll be back in a couple weeks. Don't worry. We can't wait. Back to Joff with his fabulous technical segment. All okay. Job. All right. Thanks, Paul. Yeah. Okay. So I, I was toying with this idea recently, um, and I'm going to show some stuff on the screen. Um, just confirm for me, guys, that uh, you're seeing something that looks like a slideshow here on the screen. We got a yes on that? No, Paul disappeared. Uh, seeing slides. Okay, great. So, so over, over New Year's Eve, I was talking to a friend of mine, and I said, well, you know, people get on the internet, and they, they start, you know, their pizza shops and whatever, and, and we've had this conversation on the show a few times, where um, people are uh, on the internet, and they don't realize what neighborhood they're in, and there is these things called regional internet registries, and uh, what I'd said to my friend John was, not John Strand, um, was, hey, you know, if you don't like, um, you know, China or, uh, or whomever else, uh, Bhutan, Myanmar, uh, pick a country, talking to you on the internet, then block him. And so we joked about that for a while, and then I was like, well, you know, there's got to be a way to, um, you know, find yourself an access control list for a whole country. So it turns out that this is not as trivial a problem as you might imagine, because the internet assigned number resources actually change over time. Um, not a whole lot, but they still do. Now, as we all know, IPv4 is essentially exhausted, uh, which what actually it means is that IPv4 is actually all completely allocated out to the regional internet registries. Now, there's five different regional internet registries in the world, APNIC, ARIN, uh, RIPE, I'm trying to remember them all here, AFRNIC, and um, I'm missing one, LACNIC. Uh, they all have control of the various internet number resources on the network. It turns out that these re regional internet registries are required to publish a current statistical snapshot of internet number resources. Now, I, I knew this from way back when, and I thought, well, I'm going to go after this data because I went searching for resources out there that publish country-based access control and they do exist, but it turns out that they um, usually want money for it. And I'm like, I don't think that that's going to be the case. I don't really want to pony up some money. Then there may be some free resources out there. But I thought, well, why don't we just crank up a little project to grab the data from the snapshots that the individual RIRs publish and create some little Python utilities around that. So that's what I set out to do. So all of this data is published in FTP repositories by all of the regional internet registries. It has a very common format, uh, usually in an FTP server with slash pub slash stats and then a file name. Now the statistical, ex the statistical, uh, oh, I can't say that word three times fast. The statistical exchange file name format has a convention for each RIR. It is delegated, delegated dash regional internet registry name and then a date, YYYYMMDD. The latest data is published with a symbolic link or a file copy, usually with delegated IRR name dash latest. And you also get an MD5 hash. Optionally, you can get a public key if you want to do public-private uh, public key verification, but um, usually people find the MD5 hash is enough. Okay? So what we can do is we can go out and fetch that data. Now, within the data that the RIRs publish, there's a version record, there's a summary record, uh, and for our purposes, we largely ignore those, and then we look at the actual data records that are in there. And the values in the data fields are just separated by that straight up and down character. I, I, I don't know what you actually call that, except for 0x7c. 
um, which consists of these various fields, the registry name, the country code, the actual type of data being published with whether it's uh, V4, V6 or an ASN, um, the uh, start value, which is normally a network address or it can be an ASN number, and then the actual value, which is usually uh, in the case of IPv4, a count of addresses. In the case of IPv6, it's a, actually a CIDR value. The date of the, publish, the, the publication of that record. Uh, then the status, whether it's allocated, assigned, reserved, uh, and then any extensions if needed. So it turns out we can actually fetch that data. And what I, w what I went ahead and did was built this little tool called Build RIR Database. Uh, it's in Python which all it does is runs out to the different regional internet registries and builds a SQLite 3 database from that RIR data. It converts in the process, it'll go ahead and convert the IPv4 data into CIDR format. It also stores a binary network address rep representation in the database. And the reason I do that is for sorting reasons. And then additionally, I went ahead and stored a Git repo of the, um, not stored, stored, sourced a Git repo of the ISO 3166 country code data and stored myself a little country code data table. So the idea of this build IIR database PY is that we just run it at cron at 2359 UTC daily, which is, you know, the end of the day for all appropriate time zones and pull that database down and stick it into our database. And then I wrote a couple of extra utilities to go along with this thing. One of them is called RIR ACL, which is designed to produce access control lists in different formats, uh, V4, V6, IP table, Cisco switch router, and Cisco ASA format currently are supported in this little utility. And then I wrote an additional tool called logstats.py, which is designed to read through log files and produce a percentage of hits against each country code and then print that data out as a top end parameter to those percentages. So this is all fairly simple stuff, but I think some fairly useful utilities. So what I'm going to do now is just show you those really quick. So here I am in my RIR tools directory on my, uh, on my server. And here I can show you how some of those tools work. So first of all, if we try to um, do build RIR database, it's going to say the data has been fetched already today because I built it already once today. But I can quickly remove the last fetch date go ahead and build that data again. And all this is doing is using URL lib2 in Python, running out to the different regional in internet registries and just fetching the data that they've published as their latest and putting it into the database. Actually deleting all the existing data and replacing it entirely with the records that that registry has published for the day. So we'll let that finish and then I'll just run the ACL tool and show you a couple of different iterations of the ACL tool to show you the kinds of things that we can produce out of that ACL tool. Now this is taking a little bit longer than I hoped, so we're going to have to talk amongst ourselves for a minute. But as this process went out, it fetched the Git data, 251 country codes. That's actually not technically correct, it's 249 country codes, and then it inserts two more. One of them is EU for Europe, which is continent, uh, and AP for Asia Pacific. Those are country codes that are commonly used but not in the ISO 3166 list. So this thing just runs out and builds all those records. Uh, it's fetching them for IPv4 and IPv6 as well as ASN and just going ahead and building that database. So once we fetch that, we can run our RIR ACL tool. Now we can, we can put the build, uh, the build tool in the cron job every day and just let that run in the background. And then out of this, we can do things like create IPv4 ACLs in like uh, switch format for a particular country. We'll pick on uh, Myanmar, for example, and it does a wildcard search at the end of the string. So we run this, it runs into the, into the SQLite database, goes ahead and pulls that data, and whammo, produces ourselves a nice little switch access control list in extended format for those IP addresses that are associated with Myanmar. We can also give this thing a bidirectional flag so that it fetches that same data, but also gives us a bidirectional ACL. In other words, it just reverses the source of destination with additional data. So, uh, Carlos, if you could mute your microphone, because you're making an awfully loud noise right now. Yeah, sorry about that. I just pulled the cable by accident. Okay. 
In addition to this, we can supply like a router switch, IPv4, country, me and my again. This time we get a Cisco IP prefix list out of the data. So that enables us to put that into an IP prefix inside of a Cisco router, right? We can provide the same thing with IPv6 on this data. Anyway, I think you're getting the idea. We can also provide like a country code. So if you happen to know a country code that's in two letter ISO 3166 format, uh, turns out that the Democratic People's Republic of Korea doesn't have V6. We can produce pretty quickly a prefix list for the Democratic People's Pu Republic of Korea in IPv4 format. Uh, I've actually got a little bit of an error there I need to fix. Okay, so that's the uh, ACL format. We additionally have this thing I've got called log stats, and log stats allows me to perform an analysis on an IP tables file um, and soon to be ASA file for IPv4 and IPv6 to tell us what percentage of traffic is coming from these different countries for all hits in that log file. So that's a nice little utility. We can run logstats.py, give it the IPv4 flag, IP tables flag, give it a log file, and it'll break it down by country with a percentage hit in that file per country based on the source addresses that are being hit in the IP, IP tables log. We can also give it a flag like DST to break it down by DST for the destination address. Um, clearly, in most IP tables logs, that's not going to be as interesting as the source address, right? Um, in addition to this, it supports IPv6 as well for log tables. Uh, and I'm shortly going to implement an ASA log analysis format as well as probably a Cisco switch uh, uh, log format as well. Um, so that's where the log tables thing is going. Now, the interesting thing about, not log tables, the log stats, the interesting thing about the log stats utility is in order for it to be able to do this, I actually had to implement a longest prefix search uh, radix table because the... Um, process of actually searching for this di different IP addresses is essentially a route lookup. And that's actually a very computationally expensive process. So building a radix tree inside the uh, log stats utility was necessary in order to speed that process. And that's really about all I've got for the tech segment. So if Paul could actually come back, we can put him back on. Um, the thing I also want to share is I have made this code public. If you'd like to go to bitbucket.org slash JSIR slash RIR tools, you can pull it down, play with the code yourself, and have fun with it. And I, I do have some questions, yeah. Joff. Um, yeah, go ahead. For, for example, now you have Amazon and you have a, uh, Microsoft Assure where they're actually paying other companies for some of their IPv4 space, for example, uh, if you go, I think, to the East Coast, uh, Microsoft Azure IP address range, you're going to find IP addresses from Brazil, they're going to find IP addresses from Europe, Asia, and what they did is that they took those IP address, IP4 addresses from those ranges and are using them in the U.S. Would the stats that you're pulling actually cover um, what some of these cloud providers are actually doing? No, they won't. That's a very good question, Carlos. So, so this is from the perspective of the regional internet providers alone. It's what they're publishing um, out out to um, the world from from the perspective of their delegated allocations. So, if they have chosen to delegate it to to somebody else and they record it in their data, then I'll cover it. But if they um, don't record it in their top level delegations, I won't. For example, they could delegate it to us to another uh, provider who could in turn delegate it on, and I wouldn't see that, right? Okay. Yeah. So that's that's a good question. There, there's some countries, for example, that do that as well. Like China will delegate some of their address space to Korea, I believe, and we don't actually see that. Um, I was going to build in some who is lookup ability to some of this as well to try to cover that edge case, but right now it's not there. Sweet. Thanks, Joff. Thanks very much. With that, we're going to take uh, a very short break because I know Space Rogue is just chomping at the bit to get into the security news. I'm going <laughs> to make up a second round of cocktails, and then we're going to get right into it. So live stream viewers, roughly five minutes, and then we're going to come back with security news with all of us. 
Joff, Carlos, Jack, and Space Rogue, and Steve McGrath, and maybe even Jeff Mann. I haven't seen him on camera. He's not on camera. We'll get him on okay. camera. We're sharing one mic, so I'm going to drop off Skype and call back in so that we can all be seen and okay. heard. So five minutes, check back. Thanks, everyone. We'll see you in five minutes.